Hi guys, welcome to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Please, if you are new to this channel, please push that subscribe button. We do everything city, past and present here on these little vlogs. So I do try and inform and entertain. And there's some links on screen as well for Facebook and Twitter where I do post loads of city stuff. So if you follow a friend me on there, I do check every few days and follow a friend and run back. And if you do get a chance, please have a check out my uh, film and TV channel as well, uh, which I try and inform and entertain on there and all the latest films and TV drama here in the UK and from around the world. So if you can check that out, that will be fantastic. Anyway, hope you enjoy today's feature. Hi everyone, today we're going to have a look on Book Club at uh, yeah, the Manchester City Football Book 1978. A little bit different to the usual biographies and autobiographies we look at. Uh, this was edited by uh, Peter Gard. There was uh, a number of these, yeah, I'm not too sure how many there was in, in total. Obviously this is an interesting one going back to 1978. Uh, they were a great little snapshot of the season and what was going on behind the scenes at the club, etc. And of course, that Peter Gardner was the did the match reports and, and wrote for the Manchester Evening News. Obviously, when I do my little history vlogs, uh, I do a lot of this stuff uh, featured in there for match reports, etc. Uh, and obviously, he was, he was the main city guy, as, as in, obviously, we've got people like Lakofsky and Brennan now. Obviously, Peter Gardner was, was the main city one at the time. So today we're going to look at a chapter entitled The New Boy Blues, yes, but uh, it sort of concentrates on a, on a couple of our guys. It concentrates on uh, two guys well known to you. I mean, I've actually played the charity match where they were the managers of the two teams. We, uh, Peter Barnes was uh, my manager and Gary Owen was the opponent's manager, but uh, so we had a good chat but, uh, during that, but... Uh, yeah, they would sort of quite linked over time, obviously from being youngsters and throughout the careers, and obviously now obviously has uh, returned to City from time to time, and I think they might have uh, some sort of ambassadorial role at times, stuff like that. So they are linked, but obviously at this stage they were boy blues, weren't they? They were brand, they were brand new to the team. So yeah, we're going to have a look at that. Uh, interestingly enough, I mean the piece actually starts, the chapter actually starts talking about transfers rather than the guys that have come. Uh, from from the youth, if you like, from the juniors and uh, obviously the eighteen reserves, etc. So I'll just read the start of the chapter, the new boy blues. Manchester City remained boldly at the forefront as one of soccer's original big spenders. They are ready to compete with the best of the rest when the top names become available, a policy adhered to in a game where success today is of paramount importance. So they didn't hesitate to pay second division Luton Town 350000 for stylish England-class defender Paul Futcher. It topped by 50000 the previous fee handed over to Southampton for the signature of Mike Shannon just 12 months earlier. Yeah, the main old club could have had Futcher plus twin brother Ron for a fraction of that amount had former boss Ron Saunders snapped up the pair when they were released by Chester five years earlier. City had the option to buy the Futcher twins who eventually went to Luton for £110,000. Paul rapidly made strides as a central defensive giant and manager Tony but believes he could develop into another Bobby Moore. <laughs> not quite, not quite. Uh, however, a dramatic car accident last season almost ended his career prematurely and it happened before Paul was due to play a match against Manchester City. The occasion was the second replay of the third round League Cup tie and Paul badly injured in the smash just 48 hours before that game was kept out of football for more than six months before making a successful return not only for his club, but his country too. With City's Gary Owen and Peter Barnes, Paul made a big impression in the England under-21 side. Yeah, we're going to feature that a little bit today as well. Uh, and it was his displays in the quarter and semi-final size at Main Road. I went to both those against Italy and Yugoslavia, respectively, that made City decide he was one for the future. But the, but while the cash flows, when the necessity for immediate strength of the ranks becomes imperative, there is another side to the coin when the recruitment of new players is considered. Obviously, want to talk about that. Obviously, it's not all transfers. You know, we have to rely on bringing some good young lads through as well, don't we? Uh, City of Time, of course, uh, had one of the best scouting systems in the country. And its chief uh, was one Ken Barnes, of course. Previously, uh, obviously known to you, and you certainly should should know if you, if you know any of your City history, Harry Godwin was, was uh, in charge 
he'd found a, a host of top names. And the team in 1978 uh, featured some of his guys that he found as uh, schoolboys, etc. And that included uh, Joe Corrigan, uh, Tommy Booth, Willie Donicky. Mike Doyle actually just left for Stoke City, but obviously he was he was obviously uh, one of Harry Godwin's boys, if you like, as well. Of course, uh, Ken Barnes had his son Peter currently starting for City at the time, and I think one of his brothers was in the juniors as well at this stage. And recently, Gary Owen, of course, has also emerged from the junior ranks. Both these young talents featured for the uh, England under-21s in a game at Main Road on the 8th of March 1978. Yes, I bought that. This this was purchased on that night, I thought, because obviously City had played in this colour. So I thought, well, it co covers as an England uh, scarf and also a City scarf. So I actually bought that from the souvenir shop. Uh, probably bought it from Janice, was it, on the, on the night? But uh, obviously 1978. So uh, that's where I actually purchased this. The programme's up in the... On the wall there of the uh, the England Italy game, I said. I also uh, 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 got the Yugoslavia one from the semi final as well. That was also at Main Road. Uh, but there you go. Yeah, under twenty one. There was a crowd of twenty two thousand two hundred and forty one there that night on the eighth of March, nineteen seventy eight. It was my first of two visits to 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 see uh, an England team. I've never seen the full international England team. Obviously, I've just seen a couple of under twenty one games and. It was this and then Yugoslavia quite soon after. But uh, he takes up the story, uh, Peter Gardner, about, about Italy, Italian football and intimidation tactics, etc. And obviously how it affected Peter Barnes. Uh, the tragedy of the Italian game is that they possess such high quality and skillful players, yet continue to resort to the source of brutality for which the dads of today's current crop became famous a couple of days a dec decades ago. British soccer fans constantly express their amazement that the Italians get away with such tactics, yet the game at club level in that country has always been riddled with these sort of frightening tackles, shirt-pulling antics and general skullduggery. So it has to be expected that they adopt the same dubious methods in international national matches too. Such was the case when young Italy came to main role to earn an unwanted tag as bully boys, with Barnes in particular a target for tackles that would have scared the living daylights out of anyone of the, the least bit squeamish disposition. The city winger finished with a blackened right eye and no so badly bumped and bruised it was initially thought to be broken. An ankle so badly kicked that he told me after the game there's no point in you having a look because they are so heavily strapped. Before the match he challenged had hailed Barnes as the new hope for English football. While he went on a par with their own fledgling star, Paolo Rossi, yeah, got to see him that night as well, uh, whose transfer market price is said to be in excess of £1.5 million. Pounds. Barnes is the sort of stylist the Italians would dearly love to have grace in their game. But after the mauling he received, his decision on that possibility was honest and straight to the point. I wouldn't join one of their clubs at any price. <laughs> I don't think we could blame him, do you, for that, uh, that thing? Um, of course... Uh, Peter Barnes at the time, he was obviously getting a lot of praise, uh, international level and club level, of course. But uh, Ken Barnes, his dad, uh, helped keep Peter's feet on the ground as he moved up to full international level as well. Uh, Peter recalls, a couple of years ago, I earned a lot of praise. I helped City to win the League Cup, scoring one of the goals against Newcastle at Wembley. One day and 24 hours later, I was being named Young Player of the Year by my fellow professionals. The publicity could have killed me. However, my dad told me not to read the papers because he knew that other young players had been affected by too much praise in the past. He has always made sure that I keep my feet on the ground and at the same time, he's only too willing to let me get on with my life and rarely comes down on me. But if he ever steps out of line, I know he would soon react after a match. He will pat me on the pat will help me with constructive pat me on the back. Help me with constructive criticism. He probably did that as well. But he doesn't go in much for pats on the back. There you go, that's where I got that from. So he doesn't go, you know, so it doesn't go over the top, obviously. But there you go. Uh Barnes himself, yeah, he was rejected. I think he had about nine he played some trial games for Leeds United, who were under obviously Ken Barnes' great friend and ex City player Don Revy at the time. Uh, but I think Don Revy didn't fancy him. We didn't fancy him because of his size. But obviously, we don't. We know it doesn't really matter these days, does it? And, but in those days, we still a little, still a little bit of frown. We need a little bit. Thought uh, managers probably thought players needed a little bit of something on them to uh, to make it. Uh, of course, uh, it would have. It would have, of course, 
City's game that Leeds uh, didn't fancy it. And, of course, he would go back to play for Leeds at a future time, wouldn't he? Uh, he did reminisce about, I mean, as we all do as kids playing, and that uh, sort of resonated with me some of this, uh, reminisced on, his, on Peter Barnes playing on Cholton Park. And Peter Barnes went on to say, uh, we used to use every available minute playing in Cholton Park. I started when I was nine and we would break only for our tea and then play on until it was dark. Yeah, been there. Sometimes there was 20 or 30 a side, absolutely, with people of all ages taking part. Yep, uh, it meant you had to be skillful to survive. You had to be able to beat five or six people before you could see enough daylight to pass the ball. That is if you wanted to, because there were so many players that once you had parted with the thing, there was always a chance that you would never get it back again. If you have any skill at all, those matches must have brought it out. So uh, I think we can all sort of resonate with that. I mean, I, I played at various ages where we sort of played with guys our similar age and then some older guys would come up and ask if they could play and obviously if whoever's ball it was, it's not my ball, mate, ask him. That's what we used to say. They used to, but obviously then I went through the phase where I was one of the older guys playing as well and uh, obviously then you take, you know, you do take a little bit of advantage. You know? I'm not saying I didn't kick, kick a few young lads who, who were dribbling past me and stuff like that. That's, that's growing up. That's all part of the game. Uh, Barnes listed his heroes, uh, his childhood heroes, as Best, Summerbit, Marsh and Lee. So a good company there. Uh, getting on to Gary Owen. Yeah, Gary Owen himself, he came from a rugby uh, family. His dad was a, a staff, a witness uh, rugby club. And again, his, uh, his, his dad, like uh, Ken Barnes with, uh, with uh, pizza, uh, Gary's dad would make sure Gary didn't get too big for his boots. In fact, despite being, he was, yep, this is this is not good news for us. Uh, despite being a United fan as a kid, let's whisper that. Let's not say it too loudly. Poor, poor Gary. Uh, he comments on his choices and what happened when he when he came to sort of uh, sign and get get his uh, team that he will play for in the future. Uh, he said he goes on to say Gary admits he might have joined the Old Trafford club, but for the twist of fortune, he explains Derby County, Liverpool, as well as City and United, all came for me originally. I missed visiting Derby because I had flu. Was not certain about Liverpool, but went to both Main Road and Old Trafford to have a look round. At the time, Frank O'Farrell was United manager, and John Aston the chief scout, and perhaps if they hadn't been sacked around about that time, I might have joined the Reds. But there was always something about City that appealed to me. Perhaps it was the way they made you feel welcome. Of course we did, Gary. Even even ex reds like you, though I still still a young lad, didn't really know a soul. I was made to feel part of the setup as soon as I stepped inside main row. So there you go. United United fans, shocking. They never never knew the day. Never knew the day. But say uh, we soon changed him, didn't we? Uh, Despite uh, no less than Asa Hartford, yeah, no, Asa Hartford actually was in the t obviously City team at the time, and no less than Asa Hartford would sing Gary's praises when he played for City. Uh, when he finally got into Tony Buck's first team, he would always look despondent when Mr. Tony Buck came out with the team sheet and he wasn't on it, and he sort of Tony Buck had noticed that uh, Gary Owen was always a bit down every time, but uh, it, it made him wait, uh, but uh, obviously eventually got onto that team sheet. And Asa Hartford uh, said, just to quote what he said in here, um, Owen's midfield colleague and Scotland World Cup star Asa Hartford also pays his tribute, saying, the lad has so many natural talents going for him, loves to compete, be involved, and must surely be the finest player in his position for his age in this country. And for the final tribute, tribute listen to this one, uh, listen to Bobby Charlton, no less, uh, himself one of England's greatest midfield artists down the years. He said about Gary Owen, he excites me and he's a perfect joy to watch. It's a long time since I saw a player of his age showing such skill and confidence. Young Gary has the world at his feet, provided he continues to imply himself and he is quite obviously doing that now. So there you are, two quality players obviously in that little chapter in Peter Gardner's uh, editorial there. Uh, two quality players. That cost City nothing, well, almost nothing. There would have been be certain costs involved, of course, there always is, isn't there? But, uh, and if obviously, as I said, whose futures will be linked on the pitch and off the pitch later in life as well. And I think they've remained firm friends ever since. So, uh, thanks for joining me for this little look at uh, the Manchester City football book. Yeah, 1978. It's still, I've seen copies on the internet, if you're interested in me, yeah. 
it's not massive. It's I mean, it's about ninety eight pages, but it's really, as I said, it's a snapshot at the time. There's, there's check out. There's be a few of these available as well. So seek that out if you can. But I hope you enjoyed this little look and this little excerpts from from uh, this this edition of the Manchester City football book. Anyway, nineteen seventy eight, of course, edited by Peter Gardner. Thanks for watching. How are we going to do rest day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves. Look after your friends. Look after your families. More important, let's all look after each other. To meet here again on the Citizen Channel, or perhaps have a look. Please have a look at my film and TV channel. I'll try and inform and entertain on there as well if you get a chance. But either way, if I see you back on here some someday, very very soon, I only ask one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.